What's up guys, Aurel here of Yugatech, and when OnePlus released their first Nord last year in 2020, it sure was an attempt to return to its roots. The Nord edition are created to offer OnePlus's top level performance without breaking the bank too much. But the succeeding Nord releases made some quarters question whether Nord was really being used as a way to drive sales volume. Fast forward to 2021 and we now have the official successor with this OnePlus Nord 2. There's a lot of interesting changes to this phone that reflects on their journey from a startup to a mainstream phone sub-brand under Oppo. So does it represent a welcome change? Let's all find out. This is our OnePlus Nord 2 5G full review. Starting with the design, OnePlus is keeping the Nord design language, with the camera module updated to reflect a style that has defined its phones in 2020. The phone still has a glass-like plastic frame with Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection on both sides of the phone. In the hands, the phone feels lightweight but feels really well made despite the use of a plastic frame. The back features the OnePlus logo together with the camera module that houses the three cameras, 15MP main, 8MP ultrawide, and 2MP mono lens. The ring of the lens themselves are raised higher than the module so it's a bit worrying that it might get scratches over time when you put it on a hard surface. In this case, we advise you to take advantage of the protective case included in the package. Flipping to its front, we get a large 6.43 inches Full HD Plus Fluid AMOLED display with a screen protector already pre-installed for your assurance. It also has thin bezels with a hole punch notch on the upper left for the 32 megapixel selfie shooter. Found above it is the earpiece which also doubles as a secondary loudspeaker. As for buttons and ports, look on the left side and you will find the volume rockers while on the right is the power slash lock button plus the OnePlus Classic switch for activating silent, vibrate, or ring mode. The buttons are made out of plastic but they are clicky and firm and they're also easy to reach. At the top, we have the secondary microphone while at the bottom, we have the card tray for two nano-sized SIM cards, the main microphone, USB Type-C port, and loudspeaker. More on its screen, the OnePlus Nord 2 retains the display of the original Nord, albeit being a tad bit smaller. This results in a 6.43 inches Full HD Plus Fluid AMOLED display with a pixel density of 410 ppi and 90 hz refresh rate. Generally, colors and viewing angles are on par with what you expect from an AMOLED display, and its peak brightness can help you in situations where you need it. In the settings, you have the usual suite of display customizations like eye comfort mode, color temperature, screen color mode, refresh rate toggle, and the option to hide the notch. What's new here is the option to reduce contrast in low light conditions for dark mode, allowing apps to render in their intended aspect ratio. Then there's also the AI-based video enhancement features such as resolution boost and color boost. When it comes to audio, the phone uses a combination of a bottom firing loudspeaker and the earpiece speakerphone to make a stereo setup. The phone can be loud, but the sound profile is heavily bias towards mids. There is an option to tune the speakers to a preset value in the settings. Those who want a richer experience will benefit from wireless audio devices. For software, the Nord 2 runs on Oxygen OS 11.3 that is based on Android 11. And this is where the first signs of integration of Oppo's Color OS appear. The settings menu may be very familiar to the one in Color OS 11.3 with a few tweaks to keep the core Oxygen OS experience. Longtime OnePlus users may need some time to get used to the new menu placement, but the runway has been paved with other Oxygen OS 11 changes that has been rolled out. The OnePlus launcher hasn't changed with the integration with Color OS, giving you the ability to set your preferred home screen layout, apply a custom icon pack, or disable the app drawer, and add all your apps to the home screen. For those who chose the latter, the hidden space is also available to get some apps out of sight. Pre-installed apps are kept at minimum, which only includes the standard Google apps and a couple of proprietary apps like the OnePlus Community app. By the way, Netflix is also pre-installed to ensure HDR10 support. Storage-wise, we're getting 128 gigs of total storage space for the unit we have. And if that's not enough, you can get 
the 256 gigs of internal storage model. Either way, there's plenty of storage as bloatware is kept at minimum. Now let's talk about performance. The OnePlus Nord 2 5G is powered by a MediaTek Dimensity 1200 with a Mali G77 MC9 GPU. Our unit has 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage, but there's also 12 gigs plus 256 gigs model. While this is the first time that OnePlus used a non-Snapdragon chipset, the new CPU range proves to be capable of competing with Snapdragon's top end offerings and also allows OnePlus to bring the speed it's known for to mid-range devices. Here are the benchmark scores that we got. When it comes to gaming, Asphalt 9 defaults to 60 frames on this device, which is surprising given the game's high resource demands on temperature remain manageable despite long hours of gaming on this device at a high performance setting. Running Genshin Impact at the highest setting also didn't sweat out the device. Quickly on biometrics, there's an under-display fingerprint sensor and facial recognition. And both are incredibly fast and accurate, and we didn't encounter any problems. Now let's talk about the cameras. The OnePlus Nord 2 5G has a total of four lenses. This is a triple camera setup consisting of a 50 megapixel main, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel monochrome. While for selfies, we got a single 32 megapixel shooter. When it comes to the quality, photos often look natural. There's a good amount of details and we get accurate colors. While for portrait shots, we have no complaints as it provides clean subject background separation. The ultra wide angle camera has a wider field of view, but there is a noticeable drop in image quality. The HDR mode does a great job as well here and we recommend you to use it if you want social media worthy shots. For night mode, OnePlus has updated its slow light photo capabilities with a new nightscape ultra mode which gives us excellent image without losing much detail and retaining colors and highlights. Well, there's a little bit of a noise but it's not that bothersome. Talk about selfies, it is quite pretty good in wallet conditions and can capture some sharp selfies with natural looking skin tone. It supports portrait shots as well, but the background blur feels a little bit too strong and unnatural. For videos, the OnePlus Nord 2 5G can shoot up to 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. Quality wise, it looks sharp and thanks to its OIS, it made the whole process very smooth. Now for connectivity. This device has all the modern connectivity features such as dual SIM support, Bluetooth 5.2, NFC, and of course 5G connectivity. When it comes to battery, it is handled by a 4,500mAh battery with support for Warp Charge 65T. Battery life can easily last a couple of days with normal use and can charge quickly from 0 to 100% in less than 40 minutes. In our standard video loop test, which entails the device playing 1080p video on loop, 50% brightness, 0% volume, or playing mode turned on, this device lasted for 11 hours. In the PC Mark War 3.0 battery test, it yielded a score of 17 hours and 34 minutes. Finally, let's talk about the price. The OnePlus Nord 2 is available for 25,890 pesos for the bigger 12 gigs of RAM plus 256 gigs of internal storage variant and 21,890 pesos for the 8 gigs plus 128 gigs of internal storage model. After weeks of use, we can say that this OnePlus Nord 2 is a solid mid-range device with a flagship level performance and a clean OS that will be appreciated by long-time users. OnePlus's departure from Snapdragon chipset it may raise some eyebrows because it brings with it its own set of challenges when it comes to software support but the color os integration is well timed and hopefully brings more benefits in terms of stability and promised software updates that the device is expected to receive overall we think the oneplus nord 2 is easily one of the mid-range phones to beat in 2021 so what do you guys think about the oneplus nord 2 5g do let us know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video be sure to drop a like subscribe to our channel for more content Hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Aurel and I'll catch you guys in the next one.